a gunslinger walks into a city filled with corpses. <laughs> Welcome back to my YouTube channel and this is issue two of Ain't No Grave. If you're lost in the sauce, go check out my previous video to catch up. Now, let us begin because our girl is going to hunt death and she's going to kill him. That is her mission. The only problem was before she could even meet death, she had to pass through this city, this city filled with the undead. As she walked the street, someone called out to her saying, you're not supposed to be here. He was the sheriff of this disgusting city and he was here to keep the peace, which is why he knew you weren't supposed to be here, at least not yet. She, however, replies, yeah, I just do whatever I want. And what I want is to have a meeting with death himself. So the sheriff says, okay, if you want to meet death, you have to go through me. And suddenly he gets shot in his chest. Matter of fact, he gets his brain blown out of his head. She, she was a gunslinger for real, for real. And she was here on a mission. Everyone witnessed this. Everyone saw the sheriff drop and she simply said, yeah, I'm not here for you guys. I have a mission. If you don't get in my way, you do not have to die. Now disperse. Just as she was about to go on her merry way, it started to rain. I mean, the whole of the town started to rain, burning papers. And one of the citizens out of curiosity plucked this paper and realized it was a wanted poster for her issued by death himself. The reward was going to be great. So I guess they didn't have a choice now, but she wasn't even shocked. Matter of fact, she wasn't even threatened because she's used to being hunted. Because like I said, she was with the smoke. Back in time, in her memories, we see it play out on a train. She was being hunted by the marshal and his deputies and she had one. She only had two people left alive on this whole train. The marshal tried to talk to her. It doesn't have to end like this, but she didn't want to hear it. So what? I'm supposed to give up? Let you take me away from my daughter? Hell fucking no. His deputy started crying, begging, I have a kid myself. And she said, shut up. You're a father. If it was you, what would you do for your kid? And he, like an honest man, said, I would do anything. And with that, the marshal knew he was dead already. He had to watch his deputy die right in front of him. And this filled him with rage. She looked at the marshal and told him, don't do it. But he was a man of honor. You kill mine, I have to try and kill you. She knew he had no choice. So she let him draw. Matter of fact, she let him shoot and she dodged every single bullet. And when he was done, she replied to him in kind. The only difference is she didn't miss. Now she was faced with the same odds. An army of the undead wielding guns versus one amazing gunslinger. The leader of this army said, you are in trouble now, but she laughed. <laughs> trouble i am the trouble unleashing her gun she let it rain and as the bullets went flying they struck true she was good all of them thought they were the shit but she really was the shit he was graceful with it as well like a ballerina of death but she knew this crowd was a lot so she started to move running through an alley she underestimated however how many people really wanted her dead one guy came jumping from a rooftop with a dagger and she realized midway through, she had no bullets left. So she had to go old school. Pulling out her dagger, she went to town on this guy. And with every strike, she drew blood. She went crazy, only to realize halfway through, she still had an army to face. So she tossed her daggers and went on a run as she reloaded her gun. She shot and ran, shot and ran jumping over rooftop streets. She was like Batman with guns. Seeing an open window, she jumped straight through it and they surrounded the building only for them to look inside and she was gone. To her surprise, someone had chosen to save her and he was an undead as well. Playing her part, she kept silent and as soon as they left, she broke free using her guns to aim at him. Why did you do that? And he reveals, yeah, I need you to put your gun away or else I can't help you. She was confused, why are you helping me in the first place? And he explained to her, do you think you were the first? This has been done before. Let me guess, you seek to bargain with death. And she reveals, yes, that's true. How do you know that? He reveals, you ain't the first lady. She reveals, she plans to be the only successful one. And he said, okay, 
I'd like to see you try. You're going to need to go to the docks and look for a ship called the Blind Majesty. And she was confused. When I see the ship, what next? He said, you know, if you make it there alive. And she thanked him, but she asked again, do you have anything else that will help me get there quicker? And he smiled. I do, but I'm not sure you'll be ready for it. But Shorty was down for anything. We see that he gifted her with the goddamn demonic goat. And if you know ghosts, you know they can move through anything. It was also very helpful that she was an amazing rider. Riding her goats through this demonic town, she remembered her past memories. How her daughter was amazed by her riding skill. How she looked to teach her daughter how to ride properly. As she drew blood in this hellhole, she couldn't stop the memories from flowing. Because all this was for her daughter. All this was for a life she wanted to have so badly. So she didn't have the option of stopping. She had to go all the way. With the dogs now in sight, she only had one thing to do get there but there was an army a literal army of undead men on undead horses she had to move quickly and that she did very well she didn't even tell the goat to slow down she said charge on ahead they were at the docks she wasn't even sure the goat could swim but she didn't care she was getting on that ship one way or another when the goat jumped she jumped off the goat inching closer and closer to the ship till she gets shot in the guts because no matter how good she was, she couldn't move in the middle of the air. It hurt like crazy. But on the bright side, she made it onto the ship. Looking back to the docks, she was surprised that nobody, absolutely nobody from the town was chasing her. So, she took a reprieve, a moment to rest her head before she made her next move. But this was going to be extremely hard. Seeing that she was moving with a goddamn hole in her gut. She was dripping blood everywhere, but she had to still move. Noticing multiple servers on this boat with shrouds over their head, she decided to follow one, and follow she did, till she saw a door to a salon. So, she decided to go in, trying her luck, and she was absolutely amazed by what she saw. It was a casino, filled to the brim of very odd characters and creatures and the undead. This was the Blind Majesty, and she was welcome, any day. Anytime.